Hi, I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper from Are You Ready Radio and the Zombie Outpost. Welcome back to another segment of Tips from the Bunker 2.0. And in this one, we're going to be having a lot of fun with everything you see here in front of you. Look at this collection of blades. Blades and sharp objects are always a lot of fun. And they're very essential tools for prepping and any survival situation. During this shelter-in-place situation is a great time to go through your equipment Go through your axes, hatchets, knives, and all that to make sure that they're sharp and ready to go when you need them. But like all blades, they need some work, some maintenance, and some love once in a while. And that's what this segment is about. Some of the different techniques when it comes to how to sharpen them. And if you notice, there's a bunch of sharpening tools over here. And a bunch of blades of all different kinds here. Even variegated blades. And um, I'm going to be showing you how to maintain the sharp edge on these things in this Tips in the Bunker 2.0. So let's get started. There's a number of different blades, and there's also quite a few different tools that you can use depending on the blade, the type of blade, how much sharpening needs to be done, and um, the type of knife, edge, axe, hatchet, sword, pocket knife, kitchen knife, survival knife. So first things first, a lot of times these are very um, handy. These are good for, we'll say in this case, scissors in this compartment here, or kitchen knives. And this is just one kitchen knife that I have that needs a little work, and that's why we have a piece of paper here. The thing is, um, I do sharpen my knives mostly every time I use them. And this is very handy for a kitchen type knife. However, for a knife like this, the blade doesn't even fit in there. And um, even certain blades like this, you can use it. But the thing is, the angle of the blade will determine which sharpener you need to use. These typically have a certain degree that the blade sits in, depending on the point. So a kitchen knife is a lot finer of an edge than, we'll say, a survival knife, a pocket knife, a sword, or even an axe or hatchet. So for most household knives, a sharpener like this will work very well. However, when you get into some of these other blades, you're going to have to resort to 
the old-fashioned sharpening stone or these right here. This is a very handy, very beefy, and surprisingly enough, um, one of the best little tiny knife sharpeners I have ever found. And yes, this is my recommendation. We sell them in the store. It's on the outpost. And the reason that we carry this brand is because of the degree, as opposed to a very fine wedge, um, which is good for most kitchen knives and cutting and filleting, most knives like this, this, or even swords like this, will have an edge that requires a broader angle. The, the thing is, the finer the blade and the more delicate the cut, the less of an angle it has. Blades like this are not going to be a very fine um, blade. They're going to be more of a tool for hacking, slicing, chopping, cutting, and all that. So they're going to have a wider angle on the blade. The best way to control that and to get a more a, a custom angle that the blade requires would be a sharpening stone. And yes, that will take work. Now, the sharpener that I have here, and I'll explain this little piece that sticks out here in a little bit, it has the carbide metal part here, and it also has the ceramic part here for different blades, different reasons. Most of the blades that we have here will require the carbide part of the sharpener. It also, because this blade is, we'll say, that wider angle as opposed to more narrow angle, these are not recessed as far down so you can actually get the knife tool, whatever you want to call it, into the sharpener to be able to sharpen it like you would a kitchen knife in a sharpener like this. The other thing is it makes very easy work out of it because with just a couple slides, this blade is now quite razor sharp. Now there's another element to a blade like this or such as this that you may have to deal with. And that's what this part on the sharpener is. This is to sharpen the serrated part of the blades. This is a diamond sharpening rod. And with just a couple little strokes on that, you can get into the serrated portions of the blade. This one you will have to use the contour of the blade to find your angle that you want. You're not putting a lot of force on it either. With every tool, you let the tool do the work. Now, when it comes to some of the larger blades, like hatchets or even an axe, that presents a bigger challenge. Again, you have a blade that is now in that wider range. A finer blade like this, like this, is not going to chop through anything. If, if it does, it's a miracle, and it'll take a really long time. So the wider the blade, the more it's able to chop, and it also has more integrity on that edge. This doesn't mean anything. I just had this out to show you the different types. However, this one does. This has been used quite a bit uh, the past weekend to um, just hacking down certain things over by the wood pile. And I'm going to show you how to sharpen one of these right now. Again, I always put something down underneath the sharpening block or stone. There's two different grits on this, and you want to start with the roughest one first if it needs a lot of sharpening. You find the natural position of the blade, the way it lays on there. Once you find that angle, then that's where you start. The best way to do it is you can just kind of rotate the blade this way, okay? And this will get a majority of the blade sharp. Do it that way, you do it this way. The circular motion seems to be the best way that I found um, to have the most control over it. You're just really laying the weight of the hatchet onto the block and letting the tool and the block do its work for you. And yeah, that is extremely sharp now. So, 
you see it doesn't take much. When you're dealing with larger instruments like this, sometimes holding the item or maybe putting it up on a piece of wood to get an angle would be more beneficial to move the stone over it. Again, on the uh, heavier brick side, and then going away from the edge of the blade as if you're putting the edge into the stone like we did on the hatchet to get rid of any burrs. So, those are just some of the knife sharpening tips that I wanted to share with you. Depending on the blade and the length, the angle that you need it. If it's more of a chopping tool, it's going to have a greater angle like this. If it's more of a fillet or slicing tool, it's going to have a finer angle. So you are going to need different sharpeners or really good skills to do everything on a block. Versus this, which is good for household use, not good for anything here. A dull blade will get you hurt. You're most likely to be injured using a dull blade and struggling with something to cut through it or chop through it than a sharp blade. You let the tool do the work. And if your blades are sharp and you keep them in good condition, it can be a lifesaver. Blades should always be as sharp as you can get them to do the job that you expect them to do when you need them. I hope that I help you seriously think, prepare, and answer the question, are you ready? I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper from Are You Ready Radio. Check out all the social media links at the bottom of the screen. Tune into the radio show, and we can't wait to see you at the Zombie Outpost when we reopen. Thanks for watching. Tips in the Bunker 2.0, the Sheltered in Place edition.